Okay, and welcome to this demonstration where we're now going to shift our attention to deploying an Azure virtual machine via PowerShell. So instead of clicking around the portal, we can now do it via the command line. To get started though, one thing you should have grabbed already is the PowerShell guide. And that guide is available off the website or in the link included in the course. And if you go all the way down, you know, aside from the intro sections, which tell you how to get PowerShell up and running, if you haven't already done that, if you go down to around page 22, uh, in the guide 22 yep deploy and manage virtual machines you will see a whole bunch of commands here around deploying and managing your virtual machines and you can see here uh, there is a piece on creating a simplified vm where you create the vm you create a configuration and you apply it i'm going to give you another example in a very basic way to deploy that vm via powershell but just make sure you start to get familiar with these commands you know that you can use them in the exam or just in your day-to-day -day job as an azure administrator well before that let's go look at the the code itself so here we are in Visual Studio Code, and I'm basically going to do two basic things here. The very first thing is I'm going to create a new resource group, which I'm going to use this command at the top here, where it says create resource group. I'm going to use new dash AZ resource group dash name to give a name for the resource group, and that's going to be SL dash PowerShell VM. This way we can you know differentiate it from other services we've got in Azure already there. And I'm going to put that in East US. And then once I've created my resource group, you can see I'm going to create the virtual machine. So I'm going to do a new dash AZ VM, very simple command there. And now I'm going to give it all the arguments, all the settings that I want to apply. And it will actually ask you for a few other things you'll see as we go through it. Uh, but in this case, you know, resource groups are what I'm going to do because I'm using SL PowerShell VM. I'm going to change that to SL dash PowerShell VM because I'm going to put that virtual machine in that resource group. I'm going to give it a name of VM PShell01. It's going to go in East US. I'm going to put in a new VNet, PShell VNet, a new subnet called PShell subnet, uh, and then apply an NSG and a public IP address to it as well. And I'm going to open ports 80 and 3389. This will allow me to RDP into that machine once it has been created. So how do we begin? Well, obviously, as you saw in the PowerShell guide, multiple ways you can use PowerShell. I'm going to do it for this demonstration from the Azure portal itself. So let's head over there next. Okay, and here we are in the Azure portal, and I'm going to go over to resource groups to begin with, and just check, you know, I don't have that SL PowerShell, you know, resource group for my VM there. So that's the first thing we're going to create. And to do that, we'll click the terminal window over here, where you click on the top, and this will open it up for you. One thing just to confirm, if you haven't already done it, you aren't familiar at this point, uh, on the left-hand side, you've got PowerShell or Bash here. Yeah, we're going to use PowerShell in this context. Uh, so let me make this a little bit bigger and let's start working through these commands. So I'm gonna go ahead first and grab that first command from Visual Studio. So I'm gonna grab new AZ resource group dash name SL dash PowerShell VM location East US. So let's begin with that one. Paste that into our shell and hit enter. And straight away we can see that's created resource groups naturally take a second to create uh, and it's created that SL dash PowerShell VM in East US succeeded and it's in that subscription there, the one I'm already logged into. So if I just minimize this for the moment uh, and do a refresh on our resource groups, we should see that new resource group available. Okay, and immediately we can see it there, SL dash PowerShell VM. That is our resource group. Obviously nothing in there yet because we haven't created a virtual machine yet. So the next thing we need to do then is just go ahead and grab the rest of that code. So we'll grab this whole section here, new dash AZVM and all the arguments associated with it. Go back to our portal and open up our terminal window again, yeah, our cloud shell. And let's go ahead and paste that one in. and hit enter. And the first thing you'll notice is it does need the username and password. If you remember, when you create a virtual machine from the portal, you have to give it that admin username and that admin password. That's not something you'll typically paste in here unless you reference in a key vault, which is a future discussion. Uh, but if we go ahead and just type in, I'm gonna give it my name as a username, and I'm gonna give it a password. And make sure you remember that because you'll need it to connect into the machine. And there you can see it now goes about creating those resources. So I'm going to minimize this for a second here as well. 
and just refresh in the resource group because you will see some of these items start to create quite quickly. Not everything, you know, you don't have to wait for the entire virtual machine. Some of the things will start to populate in the resource group straight away. And there we can see already, we've got the network security group, the IP address, the VNet, uh, VMP shell 01, which is the VM and the network interface. In fact, if I go over to virtual machines right now, I should start to see that machine there. You can see it there, it's already running. Uh, and it's basically, you know, should be ready for action pretty quick. It is a, a Windows virtual machine, so, you know, it does take a minute for things to, to pop up there. And you can see that it's still not quite complete. So I would hang on until, you know, the entire process completes. And I'm going to fast forward here while that does so, and then we will connect in via RDP. Okay, and after a couple of minutes or so, that is now completed. We can see the provisioning state succeeded in the result from the PowerShell execution. So let's go ahead, close this down, uh, just do a quick refresh just to make sure everything is up and running there. And you can see you've got a public IP address. So in my case, this is the IP address I'm going to connect to. When I provisioned this machine, we added that IP address, that public IP. So I'm going to be connecting over the internet directly to this machine. And then I'll need to enter my username and password. So to go ahead, I'll click connect. This will download an RDP file. And that will open up in Microsoft Remote Desktop for you. So you can see download RDP file. If we wanted to SSH in, say it's a Linux machine, we would use the SSH client. And then you also have the option of a Bastion host as well, which is kind of like a jump box where you perhaps want to connect into a virtual network first. And then that VM is only accessible via that virtual network. So think about that, like jumping into your VNet and then connect into your machine. And that's obviously a separate topic. Uh, but let's go ahead and click RDP download the RDP file because this is a Windows machine uh, and then go ahead and click the RDP file, double click it on Windows, click it on Mac and open it in Microsoft Remote Desktop. And that will pop up then for that username. So I'm gonna put that in the same one I entered. And hit continue. It'll ask you if you want to trust it because it doesn't have a trusted certificate. Hit continue and that should get us into that machine momentarily and there we go. Now we're logged into that Windows Server that was built. Now you may be wondering, well, how do we know it's a Windows Server? Well, the default when we do that new dash AZVM was to build that Windows machine. If we wanted to specifically choose operating system, size of virtual machine, all those things, those would just be additional switches and arguments that you would add, or you can do a resource configuration and then apply it to the new virtual machine, which you'll see detailed out in the PowerShell guide as well. So a couple of ways to do it, but if you're just doing the simplified build, as I did, it's just new dash AZVM, but watch for the arguments, know what you're basically building there. And then once you're done, download the RDP file if it's Windows and connect in or just SSH directly in. To end off then, and as a quick recap before we end off on PowerShell for virtual machines, head over to the PowerShell guide, take a look at the other commands, you know, aside from displaying VMs and creating VMs, if you go to page 24 here, you can see we've got all sorts of things on starting, stopping VMs. Just grab these commands, you know, they're quite easy to use. So we'll take this one, stop AZVM, does what it kind of says, very common sense. They're written in a way that's very easy to understand. If we go over to our Cloud Shell, we can run these commands, you can paste them in here. Uh, just obviously be careful what you're doing. If you're shutting down VMs, make sure you're doing this in a lab environment. Uh, but I can go in here and I can do, okay, that resource group name was sl-powershell vm. And then the VM name was, in fact, we got a space here, let's get rid of that. And then let's put the VMP shell 01. And that will go ahead and ask us, do we want to stop that machine? I can hit yes. And that will begin shutting down that virtual machine now. So all these commands, you can see PowerShell makes it really easy to execute. Instead of you clicking around, like if we wanted to do that in the portal, we would have to go find the virtual machine, go to its overview page, and then click stop up here. Uh, we can now do that simply from a command. Now think about the power of this as well. When you've got hundreds and hundreds of machines, maybe you want to stop them, start them, maybe you want to start certain services, certain time of day, you can write bigger, larger scripts uh, that essentially can do multiple tasks for you as opposed to you clicking around and doing lots of things. So that's really where the power of PowerShell comes into play as well. Uh, but with that, that ends this demonstration and should get you up and running with everything you need to know to deploy virtual machines with PowerShell. And make sure again, you understand some of the other commands around virtual machine administration.